Today, we're going to show you what happens as we descend in the water column, the effects that pressure has on objects and volume. When we get to 100 feet, we're going to open this bottle back up. We're going to show you what happens to it on the way down. We're going to fill it with air at 100 feet. Then we're going to slowly ascend back to the surface and we'll talk a little bit further about what happens. So pressure volume relationships. Sounds kind of geeky, right? All right, Rico and I are going to do it. We'll see you in a bit. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Everything Scuba. I'm Lyle. My cohort Josh is not here this week. He is in the Florida Keys diving. Everything Scuba is a channel dedicated to everything scuba. If you're a diver, you want to be a better diver. You want to learn more about places to travel to go diving. If you've never been diving, you want to learn about it, this is the channel to come visit. Obviously, we can't teach you how to dive online, but we can point you in the right direction. This week, I am on the beautiful island of St. Croix, one of the U.S. Virgin Islands. Right behind me is Cane Bay. It's on the north shore of St. Croix. And about 600 yards out is the St. Croix Wall. St. Croix Wall is the southern end of the Puerto Rican Trench. The Puerto Rican Trench drops down about 13,000 feet. But we're not going to see the bottom of that, I hope. We're going to barely scratch the surface. So in this episode, we are going to take an empty water bottle filled with nothing but air down to 100 feet. We want you to witness the effects of water pressure on this object. Once we get to 100 feet, we're going to blow into it. We're going to fill it back up with air and we're going to bring it slowly back up to the surface. We want to discuss what happens to this, what do we create by doing it, how does it relate to scuba diving, particularly as it relates to air consumption and also nitrogen loading. We're going to cover that in the next two episodes. Sounds kind of geeky, doesn't it? Or if you're in a science geek like me, you're going to dig it. Or if you want to just see what happens when we blow into this at 100 feet and bring it back to the surface to see if it explodes, you should probably stick around for that too. So, here goes. Looking out towards Buck Island on the north shore of St. Croix. Gorgeous. So we have here a bottle full of air and we'll take it down. Now, remember, this bottle still has the same amount of air in it, but because of water pressure, it is being crushed. It's becoming denser. So at 100 feet, we're going to take off the top and we're going to add air to the bottle. Remember, we're adding air. It's not that we're refilling it at this point. At about 90 feet on our way back to the surface, Rico and I encountered these two mature, gorgeous, French angelfish. Out about 15 feet, listen to what this bottle sounds like. Alright guys, we're back from 100 feet down. We came back up very slowly though, right? Nice and slow. So, what we did was, you got to see this bottle 
on the way down. It got crushed by the water pressure. And at 100 feet, I added air to it. We blew it back up. Actually, we brought a little bit of uh, water from 100 feet with us. But the big thing about this now is, let me let this truck go fast. This thing is rock hard, super firm. And that's because the gas volume expanded inside the bottle from 100 feet. When I get back to a quieter environment, we're going to open this bottle. We're going to see what happens. So I want to thank my buddy Rico here for diving with us today. Thanks for having Always me Always a pleasure to dive with Rico. If you're on St. Croix, check him out. He's an instructor here, works for scuba. He can take you out, teach you how to dive, show you some of the great places to uh, dive. So. And so what I want to do is I want to show you or at least let you listen to what this sounds like. So I'm gonna hold this close to the microphone, and this is what this bottle now sounds like as I open it. Kinda of like if you were to shake up a carbonated beverage, bottle of Coke, Diet Pepsi, whatever your drink of choice is, we created compressed air inside of this bottle. And so we've also got uh, a little bit of water from 100 feet uh, below the surface here in uh, Cane Bay. So why is this important? Why did we do this experiment? So during advanced open water classes, I like to introduce this table to my students. It shows the relationships between pressure, volume, and density. Initially, as we look at pressure, we can measure pressure both through absolute and something called gauge pressure. In these terms right now we're going to concentrate on absolute pressures and for every 10 meters or 33 feet that we descend from the surface we add one atmosphere of pressure. So at 100 feet we're at around four atmospheres of pressure. And so you can see that this is what four atmospheres of pressure does to a compressible object. It crushes it. The next item we'll review is the volume relationship. So for every 10 meters or 33 feet, you can see that there is a sequential reduction in the volume of a compressible object. In a previous video, we blew up a balloon at 100 feet. And then we rode it to the surface slowly to see what effects that might have. And you can see that at four atmospheres of pressure versus one atmosphere of pressure, there is a significant increase in volume of that object. The last piece of our table relates to density. So as we descend, we increase the density of a gas within the object. So at the surface, under one atmosphere, it appears to be a full bottle of air. Now it's as if the air isn't in it anymore, but the air really is still there. It's just being crushed and the molecules are being forced together. We've increased the density by four times. So why does any of this matter? Pressure and volume and density can have significant effects on us as divers. In terms of our air spaces, we pointed out that if we held our breath for any length of time while we ascended, we could do potentially significant damage to our lungs. We also have to equalize our ears. Our ears have a middle ear airspace, and therefore we have to equalize that with the water pressure. And your mask, it has air in it also. You have to balance the pressure of that mask against your face. Last question is, why is it that we, technically kind of a compressible container don't get crushed like the bottle does. The next thing we have to think about is buoyancy and in future episodes we're going to go into much greater detail on many of the topics that we're covering and we'll define exactly what buoyancy is but as we descend in that water column and under more and more water weight our wetsuit or dry suit becomes compressed and therefore we sink faster and faster. So using a BCD, a buoyancy compensation device, will help control the rate of our descent and ascent. Also, it doesn't seem logical that we have to add weight to our system, but because we are more buoyant at the surface, we have to 
appropriately weight ourselves using lead weight or other forms of weighting to remain neutrally buoyant at the times that we need to and positively buoyant when we need to at the surface. In terms of the effects of density, my scuba cylinder is not compressible and so it won't get crushed like the water bottle did. However, my scuba system still has to deliver four times the volume of air for me to take a breath at 100 feet as compared to the surface. In later episodes, we will discuss surface equivalency calculations and also what is surface air consumption rate and how can you improve this as a diver? Because if you have a lower surface air consumption rate, you can stay underwater longer. Thankfully nowadays, our dive computers do a lot of that work for us. You can see here my dive computer is calculating my surface air consumption rate and also something called GTR, which is gas time remaining. My computer talks to a transmitter that is attached to my first stage and it can calculate based on my rate of breathing and my surface air consumption rate how much gas I have remaining at that particular depth. And lastly in future episodes we're going to talk about the effects of diving and nitrogen loading. If you're diving on air you're breathing 20% oxygen 80% nitrogen. As we dive deeper and for a longer period of time nitrogen gets forced out into our tissues and ultimately has to come back out of the tissues into solution for us to exhale. You can breathe other types of gases to decrease this effect but we need to know about decompression theory and what is our non-decompression limit as we're diving. You can see here on my dive computer again it shows me my NDL. There's a small graph to the right side that is now in the red which shows me what my nitrogen loading is and on my dive computer it shows I have four minutes remaining at this particular depth. If I don't leave that depth, then I will incur what's called a decompression debt. And as recreational divers, we don't ever want to have to perform emergency decompressions on the way back to the surface. So these are just a few of the things that you would cover in an advanced open water class, but specifically on your deep dive. We would want you to understand this theory and apply it to be a safe diver. Hey, we want to thank you for joining us and watching this video today. If you like what you saw, smash that like button down below. If you want to join us on every video, hit that subscribe button and also check out these cool diving videos below. We'll see you next time on Everything Scuba. Side mount's awesome. Just don't carry your stuff.